At the onset of pandemic, people gravitated towards different things to cope. Some played and acted upon the idea of learning something new. Our guest artist Max McGee is excellent at what he does, urban sketching. One might probably won't guess that his journey started a year ago, and it was birthed from the desire to come out of the season equipped with a new skill. In this episode, listen as Max talks about one day one drawing challenge, why doodling isn't a bad thing, and how to get your hands calm while drawing or sketching, the different ways where you can gather inspiration, the secret to learning any kind of medium, why having an instructor as your guide will benefit you in the long run, and a technique to approaching sketching or drawing. If you want to be part of the conversation, then send in your questions and topics you want us to cover to hello at etrolab.com. Hey, this is Jesse from Etcher. We believe in your power to create, so we invited artists from all around the globe to inspire you to keep on creating. Join us in this journey and let's celebrate creativity. This is Make More Art, the podcast. I mean, my parents are graphic designers. I am now getting into the field of proper graphic design and marketing. So I think I've always been brought up in a sort of creative environment, mm -hmm. um, though I never really recognized it as creative when I was growing up, funny enough, it was always a business. Um, but the drawing thing happened actually rather recently. Um, a couple of Recent. Well, now a few years ago, it was, uh -huh. it was actually technically speaking, it was about 2018 when I was surfing Instagram and I saw some very cool drawings of, and it was particularly buildings uh, that I saw. And there were two things that captured me. One was that with the building, it was very realistic. Um, but if you zoomed in, it wasn't, you know, it was, it was, it was lines, it was pen and ink. That was it. And I couldn't believe that it was just pen and ink. Um, it captured that sort of sense of the building, the sort of uh, the proportions and the scale, but tiny, uh, very small, like it was an A5 sheet. <clears throat> and I just thought that was the coolest thing ever. So I decided at that time in 2018, well, why don't I learn how to do this? You know, why don't I, you see the videos on YouTube, the, the time lapses and the short videos, yeah. and, and, and it's very quick and, and you think, oh, well, let me just do it. So I got a pen, I got a sketchbook the wrong pen, probably the wrong sketchbook. Um, and I sat down and I was like, all right, here we go. And I drew something and it was terrible. I hated it. Yeah. And I couldn't believe that I was, I thought, man, these people must have been drawing for 30 plus years and there's no way I can ever get there. And so I tucked the sketchbook away and mm. I didn't touch it. Uh, and I continue to follow on Instagram and look at stuff. And, and I guess this is a big lesson is don't, don't be dissuaded uh, by your beginning. <laughs> Um, yeah. because the pandemic rolled around and it was about March of 2020 when everything started shutting down. Yeah. And I would say fourth week of March, I started to get super bored and I decided, you know what? I want to learn something during this time period. I want to come out the other end having like gained a skill. Wouldn't that be, wouldn't that be wild? Uh, and so <laughs> it would, and it, and it kind of was. So I started, I started, uh, I, I got a sketchbook. I, I saw Matthias Adolfson's, uh, mm -hmm. Domestica course, and I started following him as an artist. And, you know, he said, first step is get a sketchbook, get a pen, any pen, any sketchbook. I've always loved fountain pens. Mm -hmm. Um, so I figured this is a great use for my fountain pens. And I started, um, it was rough at first and I didn't really know where I was going. Um, but slowly, but surely I kind of found things that I was drawn to, you know, I, I thought about it. What did I want to draw in the beginning? I wanted to draw buildings. So let me follow all the people I can to draw buildings and see all the buildings you can draw. And bit by bit, I kind of started to pick it up and anybody can scroll back to my feed back in, you know, April of 2020, that there was a lot less detail and a lot, a lot going on, you know, and I, I, but I stuck with it. And I think that's the important thing. Um, but that's it. Genuinely speaking, 2020 was like when I really started drawing and I hadn't had any drawing experience before that. So that is kind of a big point to everybody that anybody can do it, you know? I'm just literally mind blown that you, that it was just 2020, literally last year, but looking at your works, it's it, like what you said, when you follow these artists, it looks as if they were, they have been sketching like 30 plus years. But many you, of them have, don't be, don't yeah, be Yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah, of course. Many of them have. But yeah. wow, a year, what a year, right? And I, I know that you 
you, we talked about this offline earlier that I asked you if you've been sketching daily. So with that, we're the entire 2020. So it was April when you started, right? Yeah, it was about mm-hmm. April that I started my one day, one drawing challenge. One day and one drawing. Um, and that was, honestly, I have mixed mixed reviews and mixed advice for everybody. In my okay. case, mm-hmm. I had, so, so, you know, there are a few artists and um, David Morales and, yes. uh, and a few others that are kind of big on the one day, one drawing challenge. And those guys are machines. I mean, they really <laughs> do it and they stick to it. Um, but for me, it was, uh, it was this idea. I found myself doodling, which there's nothing wrong with, and I should do more doodling. I don't enough, but I found that I was sort of drawing aimlessly and I thought this whole idea and Matthias says it and, and a lot of other artists say it. And I now say it, finish your drawings. And so I thought, all right. If I'm going to finish my drawings, why don't I just commit to finishing one every day? Because I needed I needed hours. I mean, bottom line, the only way to get better, the only way to get that hand calm and to get your lines closer to straight is to do it over and over and over again. So I thought, well, the easiest way to do this, if I do this every day for a year, I've got to get better, right? I can't mm-hmm. I can't not get better. Right. Uh, and that was sort of my belief. And and you know, I probably picked up terrible habits along the way. Um, I probably, um, you know, maybe pigeonholed myself in some ways stylistically. However, it accomplished the goal that it was for me. And that was to hone in on a style, Mm -hmm. um, get the lines down. I mean, you're basically just adding lines to your repertoire, your, your, um, what do you call it? I don't know, your bag. You need to have, you need to draw more lines. You need to do it. And surfing Instagram is great for inspiration. Uh, going to the art store is great to encourage you to pick up your pens. Mm-hmm. Um, but at the end of the day, you just need one pen and a piece of paper and you have to do it. And for me, committing to doing one day, one drawing, one, one day, one drawing for a year, that, that worked. And during that time period, I think there were maybe four or five days, genuinely speaking, that I didn't mm-hmm. complete a drawing. During that year, there were probably two days that I didn't put pen to paper. And since then, as we were talking offline, probably in the last year and a half, probably five to seven days where I truly did not put pen to paper. Every other day I've done some kind of line, some kind of drawing and it becomes a habit. You know, that's the one thing. Yeah. That that was what I I was about to ask. Yeah. That was what I was about to ask. It, It became a habit for you. You build it that something I couldn't couldn't live without. Live without. Okay. Yeah. I think I heard I have interviewed several artists, urban sketchers on the pod. And that's one thing that they kept on saying that it's something that you know you can't wait to do when you get up in the morning. And it's like you can't yeah. imagine not having it or not doing it. Like, yeah. Every day. So I know you mentioned that you started. Uh, you want to learn something new, right? In 2018, and then you stopped. You pulled your, you know, you put your sketchbook away what made you decide to pull it up again honestly it was I mean this is this was a very pandemic thing Mm -hmm. I had um you know I was very fortunate to keep my job um and to be honest and with the job that I was doing at the time I I didn't spend that much time working remote I mean I was I was back in for limited hours pretty quick Mm -hmm. um but there was a time there where I felt like um, like I wasn't doing anything, you know, I was just kind of sitting, I wake okay. up, have some coffee, the day would go by. And, and that sort of started to get to me. Um, and I thought at that point, I was like, this is a great time that I can get hours in. And during those early days, and you know, if, if anybody hears this, that used to work with me, uh, I mean, I was able to draw like six hours a day. I mean, I could wow. in between calls, in between emails, in between, I mean, I was just had the book there and I was drawing and doodling and sketching and, you know, I mean, I didn't have a commute, so I could, I could wake up and that became my thing. I would wake up at five, between five and six, have coffee and I draw for like two hours, you know, that's two hours a day that you can, and that's the other, that's the other thing with, when it comes to, to drawing. And if you think, oh, I don't have the time, mm. but you do, you have to find ways to use it productively. So again, okay. I mean, if you can, if you can get up at five and have a cup of coffee, you've got at least five to seven for most people that 
before you need to start doing anything else, you know? You're an early bird. Wow, 5 a.m. Yeah. That's, that's yeah. wow, hands down, early. That's, yeah, that's very I try. Some days I can't, but I, I do I do tend to get up pretty early. I was actually about to ask if this is something that you do full-time, but then you, you did mention that you have a, a, you do have a day job. Yeah, it's, uh, it's not at all. Um, I, I worked in diplomacy for a long time, um, like international relations, mm-hmm. um, totally not creative. However, in, in one of my gigs at that time, I was able to do a lot of graphic design, um, just small organization and, you know, multiple hats kind of situation. And I had the skills, so I did it. And I always yeah. look back to that, that creative aspect is what I enjoyed the most. Um, so I have recently transitioned to a new, new role, new type of position. I'm, I'm now doing graphic design and marketing more full-time. Oh, um, wow. and okay. that sort of allows me to continue to be more creative in my day-to-day. That was another thing with the pandemic is that, you know, why don't you just do what you enjoy? Um, okay. but the drawing is not what I do full-time by any means. Okay. Um, I've been fortunate enough to get a few commissions and mm-hmm. it's something that I, I would like to continue and expand. Mm-hmm. Um, but not something that I do full time. No, not yet. Anyways, not yet. Let, uh, let's just say not yet. <laughs> when yeah. knows, right? Soon. Yeah. I, I I just want to capture that real quick. That you know you've been doing a totally different type of job, not related to art, but you still found time to create, make art. Waking up really early you know, taking two hours of your time to really, I, I think that's that's something that I'm getting from you as well, Max, is that you really put in the effort to learn and to, you know, to really get better at your craft. And it shows, it clearly shows. When I look at your feet, I really thought that you have been doing this for a really long time. And no one would, I personally wouldn't think that it's just last year. And you're also teaching now. And that's, that's, a yeah. I, I, I interviewed someone from the pod that she said that, you know, when you, when you learn something, it doesn't, you don't have to be really, really good at it. It doesn't have to be perfect, but if it's something that you can share with other people and people can learn from you, then go ahead and do it. So on the, uh, on the topic of teaching, did you have any doubts whether this is something that I can teach? If it's something that I just learned last year or was it because you put in the effort, the hours, and you know that you're really good at this, then I have the confidence to share what I know and what I've learned. Yeah. Ooh, that's an interesting one. Totally not. I mean, I did, to be honest, when it comes to teaching, I don't, you know, I was certainly, um, what do you call it? Nervous about it for sure. Um, cause yeah, I mean myself to, to the way that I look at it, I don't, I don't know anything. I haven't, I'm not an artist. I started, you know, doodling around a year ago. So um, for sure. Uh, However, when I went to think about it a little bit, like I went through what a lot of new artists are going through now, I went through not so long ago. And I remember what it's like. Mm -hmm. Um, And I remember the things that were told to me when I started and what I think is important to impart on to other people, Uh, especially when it comes to like, there are some great tutorials out there Um, and I've watched a lot of them. Um, But there are certain things that now that I've figured out how to do it, I look back on those and I'm like, man, I wish somebody had told me it this way or, or there were certain aspects of certain teachers that I really enjoyed the process. Um, One thing that I think is the most helpful is the drawing along with. Um, So so you guys always do that. And I think it's super important and super fun. <clears throat> it's this, it's the real time. Let's sit down and do it together. And when I thought about it, you know, when I had doubts about my ability to teach, I, I thought, well, listen, I'm going to draw this drawing anyways. Mm-hmm. Why not have somebody come along and, and watch me do it? Uh, that was the, how I learned the best was watching videos like that and drawing along with videos like that. Um, you know, just, just to see what the actual process is and to show people that it looks really bad before it looks good. (laughs) Make More Art the Podcast is made possible by listeners like you. So we would like to give a shout out to Buda Crafts via YouTube. He said, so glad to see this interview. Vanessa's sketches are amazing. Make sure you never miss an episode by clicking the subscribe button now. Thank you for your support. Now back to the show. I love that. I love that. It's a long time. (laughs) 
Because I think that's a common misconception when you look at YouTube, right? And it's time lapse. And the next thing you know, oh, okay, you have a really good piece of art. That, and when you look at your own work, how come mine is like totally on the opposite? I thought that all the time. That's what that's what made me put my sketchbook away in 2018 because I sat mm -hmm. down for like 10 minutes and what I came up with was not great. And now I've realized that, oh man, all these guys that are drawing, it's not even the years that they've been drawing. It's the fact that each one of those pieces takes them two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight plus hours. I mean, hours and hours and hours. And that's what I realized is that, you know, if I'm drawing a house, I could spend four to six hours drawing a little six by nine house. And yeah. honestly, if you as a new artist spend the time to do that, like, even if your piece doesn't come out as as cool or as detailed or whatever whatever excuse you're wanting to give yourself or whatever if you spend six hours on a drawing it's going to it'll be cool if you layer it if you spend that time to put those lines down slowly but surely building yourself up i mean it's same thing with the one day well, one day one drawing for a year like you'll come up with something great you have to realize that a lot of lines go into these drawings yeah, definitely. It's it's a process. It's not an instant thing that, okay, no. you sit in for 10 minutes and then you come up with something really, like what you said, really cool. And I, I'm glad that you pointed out because uh, in the previous episode, one of the artists also mentioned that if you really want to learn, and I captured this as well when you said that you signed up for the Mexico class. So you also- took Sorry, by the way. <laughs> I've signed up for extra courses too. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I mean, you, you signed up for, for a class, right? And you didn't just settle for for YouTube. I mean, there are amazing tutorials in YouTube, but yeah. that for, for you to be able to sit and catch or draw alongside with the artist, it, it changes everything. I mean, to really yeah. guide it. Every step especially the if the artist is doing a style that you like and that's what I love about you guys is that you have so many varieties of of uh or mediums and mm -hmm. you had some of the ones for sure that I've signed up for where two things one maybe I haven't done that medium before and there I have a couple courses that I haven't quite watched yet that I'm I'm like you know what when the day comes that I want to get out some gouache or I want to do some watercolor I've oh, got yeah. a course for me but even in the pen and ink, I mean, that's, that's the one thing is that find somebody whose style that you like. Mm -hmm. And I mean, that's a good place to start, start drawing like they do start to learn how they pick up their thing. And you will naturally, I don't like the idea of like totally, you know, totally copying somebody line for line, but certainly you can pick up a, a lot of tips on how they make their style and yours will naturally come out a little bit different. You know, your own little fingerprint on, on the drawing and you'll find, Hey, I like it. I like to do it this way more, whether that's the process, mm -hmm. like, you know, maybe you don't like to draw cross hatching lines very, 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 very carefully. Yeah. I don't really think anybody does, yeah. uh, but so maybe you want to do them a little bit looser and that's your thing, you mm -hmm. know, but either way you jumped off from a point because you saw how somebody did cross hatching. You saw where they did the cross hatching. You saw how they built it up. You know, it's really important to follow along with, with people. Thanks. Thanks, Max, for pointing that. I'm sure a lot of listeners are starting out as beginners, right? Because most of our listeners are. And sometimes there is this notion that, okay, I'm going to try it first. I'm going to follow and, you know, I'll come out with exact same replica of the style that that artist is doing. But like what you said, it takes time. And yeah, eventually you will have your own style. It will come out, but you have to put in the effort. Yeah. Talk about techniques. And this is something that I've observed with your works. It's very distinct. Is it something that you developed? We talked about this earlier. You touched on this. It, it will eventually come out. But was that the style that you were really going for? It, it's it's sort of very realistic. But when you look, when you take a closer look those are like really just multitude of lines and lines and lines yeah that is what I wanted that is something I mean I'm still I think <laughs> we're always trying to chase what we want but <clears throat> I enjoyed funny enough drawing loosely is like way more difficult than drawing photorealistic really? and, and really? I mean wow. it's to me anyways mm -hmm. I find that that in order to capture the essence of the subject you tend to have to have a way better understanding of the foundations. So like if you, 
if you look at uh, Luke Adam Hawker's work, for example, his drawings are, I mean, I, the way he even holds his pen is, is wiggly. And I don't know if you, you, I'm sure followers have seen or if you've seen the way he holds his, his lines. And yet from a distance and from afar, his, his drawings have, you know, perfect proportion, scale, shadow, light. And a lot of that comes from his background and his, his ability to put in that structure, that structured underbelly. Um, so I think, don't be fooled when you see some people's drawings and they're just like these scribbly sort of like, oh, look at this. There's actually a lot going on under the hood. Um, for me, it was trying, I think some of the things, the techniques that I wanted to capture and actually my, my now wife brought this up that cause she had done some art back in the day and she mentioned something about, and I can't remember exactly now, but it was something to do with shadow and light. Mm. And it's so true. When I drew for the first time and a, a drawing where I, you know, in the reference photo could see shadows, mm -hmm. that is, and I, and I actually did it. I cross-hatched those shadows. That is the first time I drew something and it sort of popped off the page. And that to me was the exact kind of thing that I wanted to capture more than detail, more than loose lines, more than anything like that. I wanted to get that sort of like depth of field Mm -hmm. on a drawing even if I you know man look at my feet I don't have that many that that totally um uh capture that but that's kind of what I've been going for and I I to play I, shadow. light and shadow is it yes I think that it it's it looks poetic for me when I look at a, a piece of art work whether it's it's a sketch or it's watercolor and gouache the way that the artists play with light and shadow it may look like it's easy, but I know that, you know, it takes a lot of effort to be able to capture that light and shadow. It will make your drawings jump. If you can commit to doing it and, and doing it consistently and finding a way to do it, it will make your work really jump off the page for sure. Talking about subjects, Max, and you have a variety. And for most of when you started, there were buildings, but now you have a ton of different a variety of subjects that I, I've seen on your feed. How do you approach the sketch? I mean, of course, for someone who's a beginner, I, I haven't done a lot of sketching. I do watercolor, but having just a, an ink and a paper, I don't know, for some weird reason, I'm kind of scared to just, you know, doodle, start doodling. Yeah. With watercolor, I'm, I'm all good. I can just, you know, do lose watercolor, but it's an, it would be interesting to, hear from me how do you approach sketching yeah um well see the opposite is for me I think about watercolor and I think why would you want to pour water and color all over <laughs> your piece of paper it seems impossible um so similarly <clears throat> you know it's a process um I think so sometimes I do pencil first oh yeah um, that's another question that I was about to ask you yeah and I I guess I can touch on it Mm -hmm. I, for, especially for commissions, I'll do pencil first for complex drawings. I'll do pencil first for me. The only way that I can really get some of some of those drawings where I have like really perfect detail, like close detail, I'm usually doing pencil first okay. though. I would say for the past few months, I've been going pen first, um, slowly building up lines. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's really what it is. I get a, I get a super fine line like a Copic 0 0.05 or a, you know, Rotring 0.1 or, or 0 0.03 micron, you know, really, really light. So it acts as a pencil and I don't really need to worry about those lines. Mm -hmm. um, and again, it's, <clears throat> it's, it's, it's hard to see when you're not drawing along, but it's, it's starting with big shapes, starting with general, general lines, um, usually your edges, right? So when it comes to a building, your edges are going to give you that sense of like, that's your boundary. Um, it'll give you that initial sense of perspective. Um, and then your bigger shapes within those outlines mm -hmm. and then smaller and smaller and smaller. You'll rarely, if ever see me start drawing bricks first, right? Okay. You know, you, your bricks and stuff, that's all going to come later. The texture of the brick is going to come later. The shadows are going to come at the very, very, very end. Mm. Um, which I think you could probably mess with that order to be more efficient just because you don't need a lot of detail if it's going to be under a shadow. Yeah. Um, but everybody kind of has their, their process, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, I do get, I, I will say though, you know, every subject, no matter how complex, it can be reduced to big shapes. Um, and a lot of, a lot of people say that, um, 
in these tutorials and you as a beginner think, well, it's easy to say when you've been doing it a lot. And I will say, it is easy to say when I've been doing it a lot. And I get what you're feeling and I get what it feels like. Even me still, I approach drawings and I go, I don't even know where to start. Yes. Um, all the time, all the time, especially if it's commissioned and I'm nervous and I sit down and I just, I think, what am I gonna do? How am I gonna get started? Yeah. Um, if I get too, if I do, if I get too, um, too frustrated, I do stop and I don't do it at that time. I'll come back later or I'll doodle a little bit, mm -hmm. come back to it later. But at the end of the day, I always go back to the same thing. Outside edges, inside, outside, inside, inside. baseline to, or base shapes to more complexity. Mm -hmm. um, or I'll pick up on something that I can identify that I know that I like that drew me to the drawing in the first place, the scene in the first place and focus on that, you know, whether it's a, if it's a, if it's a plant out front of it, if it's a, you know, a, a fancy, again, I'm not an architect, so I don't know the terms, but you know, fancy ornate sort of mm -hmm. piece on the window. Maybe I'll focus on that particular spot and go out from there just because, I, okay. you know, you, you want to, you always want to draw things that inspire you and that keep you excited. Otherwise, I mean, you're going to be with that subject for a long time. So if you have to spend six hours drawing something that you totally hate, that doesn't inspire you, that's true. you're not going to have fun, you know? I want to, I want to ask you, because if, if, if say I'm, you know, I want to dive into sketching, right? Um, you said that to focus on one thing and then expand from it. What would you recommend to someone who is a beginner to sketch first? Is there a particular subject maybe that, you know? I mean, I don't know. Listen, I, and I told you why I love buildings just because I like capturing. <laughs> oh, that there's scale. a bias. There's a little bit of bias. No. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know why. Um, I think partly for me, the buildings thing was also that I want to get to the point where I can sit down at a cafe or sit down on a rock when I'm on a hike and draw the scene. Okay. That to me was like the ultimate goal. Mm -hmm. Um, was to be able to like, you know, turn to the person sitting next to me and say, hey, look at this and have them go, wait, you just drew that uh -huh. scene, captured that, yeah. you know, and I'm, I'm getting there slowly but surely. Drawing from a person is, is really difficult. Mm -hmm. um, I would say for beginners, um, focus on things that have texture. texture. Um, so there was a book that I read by, oh, this is terrible. He was an old, old artist. Maxwell, something Maxwell. Um, if only, I don't think I see it there. But he was a landscape pen and ink artist and he, oh, like back in the day. I mean, like 19, late 1800s, maybe. Um, I have to check that and out. I, it's, it's kind of an interesting read. It's very funny. Mm -hmm. um, but his whole thing was don't like, like the most difficult things to draw are things that don't have texture. So you think to yourself, oh, let me, let me draw this like basic house, this simple house that doesn't have any trim on the windows and it, it's just made of concrete and it's, yeah. that'll be easy, right? Mm -hmm. It's actually not because when you have texture, there's a lot more room to be more gestural and fake or, or not fake, but um, uh, to go, uh, we you say in music, ghost it, to sort of fudge on what you're actually seeing and create the illusion of leaves on a tree as opposed to the illusion of a concrete structure. Yeah, I mean, what, that makes sense. You're just drawing a plane, you know, you're drawing a, a square and it's flat and there's no way for you to give that depth and detail. Focus on things that have very clear and definite uh, shadows. Because if you draw a very flat facade, it's really, really difficult to give depth. Mm. So, and unless you're skilled in, in sort of, um, you know, it's one thing to draw a shadow that you see. It's another thing to create shadow uh, based on what you know about the way light works. Mm -hmm. I am not an expert in the way light works. I generally try to find references or scenes when I'm out in person where there is natural shadow that I can sort of very clearly see and find. Okay. Um, but those are- But really yeah, good. it starts simple too. Start simple. Right. Those are really don't good. Go, don't yeah. go crazy. <laughs> go crazy. Uh, I think I also you also mentioned just start doodling. I think you, you, you start. Know, just start doodling. Um, yeah. yeah. I was about to ask, where do you draw inspiration? I know you you've sketched like for here. Are those from reference photos or do you normally take a walk around the block and you know look at buildings and then just start sketching? 
Yeah, so so I don't draw a lot from um, from actual in person. You you can see the ones that I do. I tend to have a totally different style when I do that. Way more loose. Way more just trying to figure it out. Yeah. No pencil first when I'm on location. Um, there is actually like this like these little handheld sketchbooks that I have. These are the ones where I draw from when I'm sitting there. So they're very loose. They're very just and and I mean some of them aren't even finished hardly. Um, details but yeah. but in 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 these cases obviously it's what i see what i'm around um for a while when i started i was drawing inspiration from instagram accounts okay um i started following accounts that showcased facades and buildings and structures and whatever mm. um i started to get away from that just because you always want to ask their permission before you draw one of their their yeah. posts and i didn't want somebody to come along and like right. i wanted to be a positive experience yeah. I don't want anybody to come after me for anything. Okay. You know, I, I'm here to have fun, especially back in the beginning. That would have just totally like burst my bubble. Um, <laughs> so I stopped doing that. And I would only ask an Instagram artist if I could draw their post. Um, the rest of it was inspiration when I was drawing from location, like walking around yeah. DC um, where I was living at the time. A um, lot of cool architecture there, obviously. Um, and so that's that's where I would draw a lot of the inspiration from. Instagram artists where they have those challenges where it's like draw this in your style. Mm. Love those. Those are great. Those are fantastic. You can always see how other people do it. Yeah. They're oftentimes really cool reference photos that are fun to draw. Okay. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, that's that's kind of where I would find my inspiration just just from out and about from being around. I mean, I've gotten more into nature sketching, especially just I've gotten I've done a lot more hiking these days and I, I really enjoy it and I, I would love to get better at nature sketching it's hard though because there's a lot of detail mm -hmm. um, but that's why I always encourage people and anybody who's listening to this if you see a photo on my a drawing on my feed that you like let me know because I most 99% of my posts are photos that I took they're my reference photos so if you want it I'll send it to you and you can draw it too you know that's very like, generous that's right. always encourage people to be able to find cool subjects to to draw yeah you you mentioned that you recently moved from dc to and you're now in seattle yeah uh, yeah so you mentioned you do a lot of hiking and i brought that up because most of the urban sculptures that i've interviewed on the pod they do travel a lot so mm -hmm. when pandemic hits that became okay what am i gonna sketch now or where do i yeah. draw? but with you it's like it's the opposite the opposite right i started in the pandemic i started drawing things from out in yeah now i'm out in the wild and i'm trying to draw you know yeah <laughs> okay Listen, they were very interesting artists max someone who started 2020 and yeah it's totally on the opposite side of the usual process and like what you said everyone has their own process but with you i think what you're doing is really working out really well for you and people are Thank learning I, I i'm checking out your your profile and your feed and you have a very engaged community and I, I do mention that a lot because i think it's really important when you put something out there uh whether it's tutorial or you know your your works and people learn from it and you can see it in the engagement more than the vanity metrics of course but it's you helping out others especially beginners so yeah um that that's what I that's what I've seen. So any like major golden nuggets that you can share with some for anyone probably who want to start urban sketching? Because like me, it's literally scared of just using a pen and ink and and a blank paper because probably because I can't draw a straight line. Simple as that. Well, yeah. Well, <laughs> Can't. First, start practicing how to draw straight lines. That's a good golden nugget. Um, <laughs> there are plenty, there are lots of tutorials on how to kind of help get your lines straight. And really it just comes to drawing a lot of straight lines, but also realize your lines don't have to be straight. Um, a lot of my lines are all over the place and totally wonky. Um, it's just, you kind of find ways to hide that. Okay. Um, I would say always finish your drawings. Um, and many people have said that many people do say that and the, the important thing is is you will spend 30 45 minutes on a drawing and you will produce nothing and if you were to stop there 
you're never going to finish a drawing and you're never going to see what your potential is. But if you spend the time to actually finish it and like go through as much detail as you possibly can, um, you will, you'll be surprised at what you're capable of doing. And that will encourage you to do it again. Um, it's daunting to say, all right, I'm going to sit down and draw for six hours. Um, nobody does that. <laughs> you generally just start drawing and you, Maybe people do it. I shouldn't say that, but especially people whose job it is. I guess if you're an yeah. architectural illustrator, you, you should probably sit down and draw six hours a day. Um, but oftentimes you, you just naturally fall into it. Um, don't be discouraged by like um, by finishing a drawing and it, it doesn't really meet your expectations. Just do it again. It doesn't matter. You don't, you don't need to impress anybody. You're your only critic. And I think that's the tough thing about social media is that people start posting and they don't get a lot of likes and they don't get a lot of follows and they don't get, listen, I don't know why all these people follow me. <laughs> I don't, I did. They're learning not from my, you, Max. They are learning. I know, I know. <laughs> and, and that's great. But, but like um, when I first started, I mean, it was like me and my five friends who, who liked my photos, you know, I mean, there was nobody and, it, it, and there was nobody for a long time and it, but it wasn't about that. It was for me, Posting on Instagram was a way to stick to my challenge because I can't, it's easy to say you're doing a one day, one drawing challenge. And then like every five days do a drawing. I wanted it to be very legit and I wanted to hold myself to it. And so I would post every single day. And that was like, you accountable. <laughs> that would hold myself accountable to at least the measly following that I had at the time. Like somebody would call me out and say, Hey, you haven't drawn today. Um, <laughs> That was it. And slowly but surely, you know, you find something, sometimes people like it, some things go viral. So don't be discouraged by like, oh, people don't like my posts. I still have posts where, where not a lot of people like them. Mm -hmm. I don't let it get to me. It's not about that. It's about learning to draw. Um, watch as many tutorials as you can. Subscribe to the Etcher videos. The Etcher videos are great. If you, do, if you're, if you, if you like, you know, if money's an issue, then there's tons of free resources on YouTube. Um, if you're wanting pen and ink, look up pen and ink drawing and you've got at least, you know, several hundred hours of videos to go through. And once you exhaust that, I'm sure you'll be at the point where you can draw something, you know, something. Definitely. Um, Definitely. draw small, don't draw big giant drawings. Um, my sketchbook is a five. Like, I mean, that one's, that one's an A6 that, that I just showed you is a little tiny one, but yeah, that's my, sketchbook, cool. my sketchbook is just a little tiny sketchbook. Hi. It's not big at all. Um, it's, if you are going to sit down as a beginner artist and draw something that's like an A, my, I don't know my A's very well, my, an, an A4, Four, yeah. or even an A3, or even an A2, mm -hmm. You're gonna have a. I mean, that's really tough. I don't even think I could draw an A two. I don't think I can either. Yeah, I mean, and some people do on on on. I've, a lot of artists do, and it's amazing. And it's incredible. But if you're just starting, I mean, start small, but not too small that you can't see what you're doing. You know, I mean, good point. I do like A five is like a good size. You know, it's a good, not too big, not too small. You can get a lot of detail, but you don't have to do too much. Um, have patience. Don't be so hard on yourself like that's a big thing i'm hard on myself sometimes and it it's a drag it doesn't it it's it makes it not fun and the whole point is that it should be fun and enjoyable you should enjoy the process whether it's like the smell of the ink or the the pencil shavings or the eraser or the coffee or the scene i mean you should really genuinely enjoy it and if you don't then i mean don't force it because it's never going to be enjoyable to you you know very well said do what you like yeah very yeah. well said. I love those golden nuggets. You've given us a lot, a lot. And you've given me a lot to think about sketching. I'll probably mm -hmm. just grab my pen and start doodling. Good. Um, yeah, it just inspired me to do that. But Max, thank you so much. And thank you. You are not following Max yet on Instagram. You can find Sketch to the Max. It's very witty, by the way. <laughs> it was again i started this as a kind of an ironic like huh. sketch to the max that won't it, yeah. it's not yeah. really funny <laughs> sketch to the max. and um his class they are still up the recordings are still up so i'm gonna drop that into the description box so please do check that out and um max again thank you for thank you for art. i had so much fun chatting with you me as well really amazed by how you reach this point of artistry like level of you know excellence in terms of sketching uh, 
like what I said, I'm gonna say that again. I really thought that even doing that for a really long time. Um, and I'm sure your community, the people who follow you, they are learning a lot. And again, if you want to check out and learn more about this process, then do check out the recording um, of Max that's on the Etcher website. Max, thanks again. And uh, I know Thank you're you. in Seattle. I've never been, but I know that you're having so much fun, uh, you know, uh, with it's nature. Cool well. yeah. It's a great city. It's very fun. Uh, a little rainy to do urban sketching, though, so... <laughs> More of a summer gig, I guess. We'll see. Yeah. But thank you guys for having me and, and thank you for doing the work that you do. I really enjoy your your platform. Um, I've I've learned a lot myself as an artist and I'm honored to be on part of your repertoire program. So <laughs> it's really great. And to all those listening, hope you hope you're inspired. Hope you want to pick up your pen. Reach out to me anytime. And I'm always down to to chat and give advice. And you know, awesome. everybody's learning. We're all learning all the time. So keep it up. Thank you, Max. Stay Thank safe you. and I'll catch up again next time. Have a good one. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm. right. I personally did grab my pen and paper after my interview with Max. He is such an inspiration that regardless of whether you have or not an art background, you can learn anything. In fact, resources are available at the tip of your fingers. So I am curious, what new things have you explored lately? And did you build a habit around it? Do let us know by sharing your comments through the blog post associated with this podcast at etrolab.com slash max. We would love to hear your thoughts, so please drop us a five-star review on the Apple Podcast or you can find us on YouTube at Etro Studio. And, oh, hitting the subscribe button is greatly appreciated. Thank you so much for tuning in and we'll catch you again next time. Until then, let's make more art.